Hello, and welcome to the Shape It Up Live show. Do you freak out when you step on the scale, especially when that number is not what you want it to be or you think it should be? Then you are in the exact right spot. <laughs> Today we're talking about nine reasons why your scale may go up. So welcome to Shape It Up. I do live video shows every Wednesday at noon Eastern time. And um, here at the Simonin House, it is officially summer. The kids are off of school. And because it's a live show and I work from home, who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't. I asked them not to video bomb me in the background. So um, I am kind of in an excluded part of the house, but you never know what you might hear. Um, so I do have two young kids. Well, they're not that young anymore, actually. I have a 14-year-old that's going to high school and a 12-year-old who's going into seventh grade. So they are occupied right now. Um, so this is the joys of working from home. It's great when they go to school and then in the summer, they don't realize that uh, mom doesn't just train clients. I have to do marketing and computer work and they don't understand why I can't just, you know, take off a half a day. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So if you are the first time being here, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Nicole Simonin. I am the owner and the only personal trainer at Shape It Up. Um, I created Shape It Up back in 2006 and I love working one-on-one -on -one with clients, which is why I keep my client roster um, list very small. I like to give my clients what they need and the attention that they need, and that is why my client list is not very large. I am the only trainer. I used to have trainers when I had a studio. Um, they were great and wonderful trainers, but I really like doing the coaching and the training all by myself. So I know that everybody's getting what they need, and I don't have to follow up with other trainers. So um, I do have an exciting new program that I will be coming out with for anybody online. So it doesn't matter where you live as long as you're in the United States and you have an internet connection. Um, this program, I can't wait to launch it. Um, I've been working on it for a while now and I'm eager to share it with you. It's going to open up in the next two weeks or so. So if you want to be the first to know, head on over to shapeitupfitness.com backslash, whichever way that goes, backslash, contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T. And there's a form on there, and just send me um, just a message saying you're interested in the new program that I'm going to be announcing very shortly in the next two weeks. All right, so on to our topic today, nine reasons why your scale may be up. Um, this is for all you ladies out there who are freaked out when the scale goes up 0.2%. You have to let it go. <laughs> you, I know if you grew up in the 80s, it was all about the scale and everything. You really have to let it go. Um, so here's reason number one. You might have had a really salty meal. Okay, this one's probably pretty obvious. Um, there's a lot of sodium in a lot of different foods like salsa, picante sauce is really high in sodium. Um, a lot of your traditional Mexican foods may have salt in them. Um, obviously chips, pretzels, that kind of thing, that sodium will puff you up. I know me personally, um, I try to add a little bit more salt into my diet because I um, have migraines and it supposedly helps the blood flow a little bit more. But if you have heart conditions or anything like that, always check with your doctor before you add salt. But if you have too much salt, you are going to puff up and it sometimes takes two to three days for that sodium to get flushed out of your system. Uh, number two reason why the scale may be up is you have had too much sugar. This is processed sugar. Um, your body kind of reacts to sugar similar to salt. I personally find that salt puffs me up very quickly, but sugar does the same thing. Like if I have a piece of cake or something that's really high sugar, um, I'm puffy. So be aware of your sugar content, and sugar is in absolutely everything. If you didn't know, it's in your toothpaste, it's in your spaghetti sauce. Um, so just be aware of how much sugar you're intaking. That could puff you up and increase the scale. Number three, you are dehydrated. Um, many people don't drink enough water. Uh, I would guess that most women only drink 30 to 40 ounces of water a day. 
ideally you should be drinking 90 to 128 ounces of water per day. Now, if you are drinking caffeine or if you're having salty foods or sugary foods like we just talked about, you may need to add a little bit more water in. Um, yes, you can have too much water. It is called hyponatremia. And basically, it's called, it's also known as water intoxication. Um, generally speaking, the people that you hear in the news that have done this um, have too much water. A lot of times they have an underlying condition that caused them to not be able to regulate the water and the sodium levels in their body. Um, it is extremely rare for this to happen. So don't go overboard. I think it's when you more, you drink a lot of water in one chunk. So don't be drinking a gallon of water in an hour. That's not smart. Spread it out through the day. So ideally, again, 90 to 128 ounces of water per day. Um, good rule of thumb. There's some TMI coming up. Um, there's a couple TMIs coming up in this video, so <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> good rule of thumb for uh, hydration is if your urine is pale yellow or clear, you are hydrated. Um, if it's dark yellow, you definitely need some water. All right, so number four, which I should have put as a number two, <laughs> um, if you haven't done a number two, you could have some extra scale weight on your on the scale. Um, so depending on the last time you had a bowel movement, your scale may be up a little bit. Another thing to think about is how much fiber are you eating during the day? Again, ideally, you want to have 25 to 50 grams of fiber per day. If you're on the really low end of fiber, don't go jumping up to 50 grams of fiber um, because you can actually get constipated and, and, then it, and then you're really going to the bathroom. So if you're going to increase your fiber, make sure you do it gradually. All right, so number five, another TMI. Guys, if you're listening, hold your ears. <laughs> um, if it's that time of the month, ladies, uh, I personally, um, I'm pretty small in stature. I'm like 5'2", and, you know, I'm tiny. So when um, this time of the month rolls around, I sometimes have gained five to six pounds. It's all water weight. I look like I'm three months pregnant. Um, it flushes out, and I've noticed it happens more now that I'm in the perimenopausal stages. And then that's us, you know, that 40-plus range. Um, and our hormones are kind of all over the place during perimenopause. Um, if you're not familiar, perimenopause, and I think people get confused, perimenopause is actually the transition from childbearing years into menopause. So menopause is, there's no period whatsoever, you're done. I'm looking forward to that moment. <laughs> um, but perimenopause is the, the time frame, the, those 10 years they say, before you get to menopause. So in that time frame, 10 years, your hormones are going crazy. You may get bloated, okay? It flushes out. Doesn't mean you gain fat. Um, all right, number six. You ate something you may be intolerant to. So intolerance and allergies are two different things. Allergies are a 911, a medical emergency that you're going to die. You need an anaphylactic shock or a shot, not a shock. <laughs> um, intolerance just means you can eat the food, but you're feeling pretty crappy about it. Like you're bloated, you may feel nauseous, gassy, that kind of thing. Dairy is a huge culprit of, you heard lactose intolerance. Um, dairy is in everything. And what happens is um, lactose is milk sugar. And some people just can't digest it. And if you digested it well in the past, it doesn't mean that you can't get it later on. That was my case. I used to drink gallons of milk a day, cheese, everything. And maybe I had it and didn't realize it, but as I got older, it got worse. Um, so you can develop it basically later in us olden years, you know, over 40. Uh, the other thing is wheat and, wheat and, wheat and gluten, uh, which again, you've probably heard about it's being talked about a lot, gluten-free, that kind of thing. Um, but if you find that you're very lethargic or bloated after eating certain foods, you may want to be aware of, you know, what you've been eating and try and take it out for a little bit and see if you have that same reaction. Um, if you find that you do have a wheat or a gluten insensitivity or toler intolerance to it, it doesn't mean you have celiac disease. Um, that needs to be tested and you need to go to a doctor for that. 
but you could just have trouble digesting it. Um, I know I feel much better when I don't eat a lot of wheat products and gluten products. Um, sticking to whole foods feels best for me, so you're welcome to try that on if you like. All right, number seven, if you did a very intense workout or you went for a run, um, when you work out, your body goes into an inflammation response because the whole point of a workout is to kind of break down the muscle, um, you're stressing your nervous system, it all in the effect of your body trying to rebuild it and make it stronger and faster and all that good stuff. Um, you might find that you're a little swollen, basically inflamed. Like if you were injured, like if somebody punched you or whatever, you would, you know, it would swell. Same idea, just it's not like a contusion. It's not like a bruise or anything like that. Um, for instance, if you've ever done a really hard leg day uh, or leg workout and you feel very wobbly and then later on you go home and you try to put on a pair of jeans that you know fits you and you can't put them on, don't be shocked. It's probably your quads are swollen or your glutes are puffy. Um, they will depuff in a day or two. Um, number eight, you may have gained some muscle. The scale will definitely go up if you're gaining muscle. Um, if you are doing a fat loss program and gaining strength, which I recommend highly that you be doing, especially over 40, um, that scale may go up. As long as your inches are going down, you're heading in the right direction. If you're, if the scale it continues to go up and you're not really seeing too many inches changes, then you need to address your food, um, how much activity you're having, and that type of thing. Um, muscle weighs more than fat. I'm sure you've heard that before. Muscle takes up way less space because it's more compact and condensed than fat. Muscle is good. <laughs> we want muscle. Um, you do want fat. You want body fat, but you don't need that much. Um, all right, number nine. Last one, and then we have some bonus ones at the end, so hang with me here. Number nine, uh, if you have cut your carbs back recently and then re-added them back in, the scale may go up. If you have dived into the latest and so-called greatest fad diets, which I hope you have not, uh, you know, it's pretty common right now to be cutting out the carbs. Once you cut out carbs, um, and I did a video on this before, basically when you cut out the carbs, um, you lose water weight. And that's why a lot of people, when they start these low carb diets, the um, scale goes down immediately because they're losing so much water weight and you don't really want that effect. You wanna lose body fat, not water and not muscle. Um, so when you take those carbs out, when you add them back in, the molecular structure of a carb actually has two water molecules. So every time it's pulling in water into the cells, which will increase your weight. Um, so if you add them at, back in, I mean, instantaneously, you could add three to five pounds on the scale in a day. All right, so here are some bonus tips for you. Um, if you burn 3,500 calories, which is supposedly equal to one pound of fat, uh, unless you are overeating 3,500 calories on top of your uh, metabolic rate, so like for me, my metabolic rate would be 1,200, I would have to eat an additional 3,500 calories in order to gain one pound. That's a lot of food. That's like, you know, a little under 5,000 calories a day. Um, so if, unless you're overeating that much, you're not gaining fat. It's water, it's volume of food, it's, you know, all the things I listed earlier. Um, bonus number two, your weight loss journey is not a 12-week program. It is a lifelong journey. You need to find something that works for you for the long run. I highly, highly stress this with my clients. You have to find something that you can be able to maintain and do and get the results that you want. Um, so don't just get a 12-week program and think you're done at 12 weeks. I need a drink of water, sorry. See, I'm hydrating. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, use pictures to judge your progress. If you're on my Shape It Up page um, and you saw one of the posts that I posted, 
I had just done a workout and I wasn't seeing the results on the scale and in my inches and I said oh I kind of flexed in front of the mirror and I was like holy cow like I was amazed that my arms are really starting to show through so take pictures because a lot of times you may not see the results on the scale um, but seeing pictures especially when it's like and don't take a picture one week and then another week later take a picture and expect to see this drastic change I'm talking like you know three months, two months. Um, I have one client who started um, and she's down 20 pounds and she's doing phenomenal and she's been here for three months, okay? So don't feed into that, you know, drop 20 pounds in a week. <clears throat> All right, so stop having the scale be the ultimate scorekeeper. When I assess my clients, I do use the scale, but I also take in consideration their girth measurements, which is a tape measure. Um, how strong they are, if they're faster, if they're more flexible, and most importantly, how their mindset is and how their thought process is. So I have one client who's been working with me for a long time and um, we're having some struggles. We can't, the, her body just does not wanna lose the weight yet. So there are some issues that we need to ad address, but when she first came in, her mentality from when day one to now is a complete 180. So she's really ditched the dieter's mentality and keeps working on it. It's hard to get rid of a dieter's mentality if you've been doing it for 30 plus years. Um, but it's amazing how the mental switch is there too. Because if you don't have that, you're, you, it's hard. You just keep replaying the same patterns over and over again. Um, so instead of using weight as a goal, set another goal that doesn't have to do with weight. A very popular goal that most women have is um, a 5K, doing a 5K, running it, walking it, whatever. This awesome goal, but you gotta find something that inspires you and, and makes you wanna do something a little bit more to push you. Um, this is why I like doing Goliathon, which is a local charity event that I do two times a year. And um, it pushes me, you know, it keeps me on my toes and we work as a team and, um, and this fitness competition that I'm doing. And again, you don't have to do a fitness competition. You do not have to do an obstacle course, but it has to be a goal that lights you up and inspires you to keep pushing. Um, so I had a client who was, they had a shore house and they went down to clean it. And the year before they really had a hard time pushing up the windows to get them open so they could clean them. And she came back to me and I'd only been working with her for like a little under two months maybe. And she was like, I, you know, did the windows and everything. And she goes, I could lift them so easily and effortlessly. And we were doing a strength building program for her. Um, so it's not just about how you look. So that is a very pleasant byproduct, right? How small you are or whatever you want to, whatever your goal is for what your ideal physique is. Um, but being able to do daily activities is really key. I hate to tell you, but being over 40, you know, as we get older, most people think that everything declines. It's in my mind really about being 90 years old, not having someone to wipe my face or wipe any other part of me. Um, I want to be able to head into the bathroom independently and be able to feed myself, be able to open jars, do all those kinds of things. It's really about independence as you age and keeping up your strength and to be able to do your daily activities as you get older. You'd be amazed at how many women over 40, 50, 60 that I have worked with who are doing these phenomenal things that they never thought they could do because I think we have this mentality that over 40, you know, you're out to pasture. Not the case, okay? All right, so do not give your power to your scale. <laughs> All right, that wraps up the live broadcast part. If anybody has any questions, you can enter them right now. If you catch this on the rebroadcast, you can also put your comments down below as well. Um, I'm just gonna wait one more second and see if anybody comes in. I see Kim is on, hello Kim. Um, all right, so I don't see any questions coming in. I know sometimes it takes a while to generate, but I don't wanna hang out here and you staring at me, me staring at you, <laughs> awkwardness. Um, so if you do have a comment, put it in the comment section below. I will answer it. If you like this video, please give it a like, share to a friend. Um, you can also go to the Shape It Up page and 
like the page. That would be awesome and helpful. And let's see. So next week, um, check out the Shape It Up Live. Also, um, if you notice, I have been popping in here and there doing live broadcasts here and there. So if you have a topic you want me to share, they're really short little live broadcasts, like a couple minutes. But if you have a topic that you're interested in, let me know about it. And in the meantime, you can head over to shapeitupfitness.com and check out all the information there. And remember to get fit, be fierce, and have no limits. All right, take care, have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Bye.